Hey family, how is everybody doing? Um, aha, there it is. Okay, there it is, there it is. Jumping around for quite a while now. Alright, hey fam, I'm actually in studio. I just came from, you know, yeah, conducting an amazing conversation with a brother in Christ and he was my guest on the show. And the Lord... Oh Lord, the Lord kept talking as I'm busy doing what I gotta do in terms of, you know, conducting, you know, interview. Uh, for many of my brothers and sisters, I work for Africa USA Radio. It is a gospel radio station. My show is The Burning Bush and I come to you live Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 Central African time. So that's what I do. I'm about propelling the, the gospel of Christ Jesus. That's, that's, that's what I'm interested in. Um, but as I was, you know, having this amazing, awesome conversation with this amazing man of God that whose heart is sold out for Christ, like sold out for Christ. There's so much that the Lord was dropping in my spirit as well. And um, he kept saying that, uh, you know, it's like everybody's getting the mandate and everybody's charged up. Those who are ready to do the will of the Father, they are ready to do the will of the Father, okay? They're like on fire to do the will of the Father, right? Um, and the Lord kept dropping in my spirit that, for that which is about to do, which is going to be major for a lot of his children. When I say major, I mean like it's going to be mega major, you know. So whatever it is that the Lord has uh, planned for you, it's going to be so big that it's going to take everything out of you in terms of faith. you got to move by faith. you got to move by faith. I think I've, I'm repeating this message, but it's what he spoke about uh, the other day. I'd gone to the gym and I took that video. Because, I, yeah, I was catching flames from the fact that I had to release that, you know, right? You know what I'm saying? But I'm just here to encourage you. Do not be afraid. The Word of God is basically saying, let us do not be afraid. And he keeps saying that a lot across his word. Do not be afraid. And uh, the God of glory is basically saying, for that which he's going to do right now, he says that not only must you not be afraid, um, also understand that he's going to go ahead of you. He's a God who's going to go ahead of you. And he took me to Deuteronomy 31, 18. He said, the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. The Lord is the one that goes ahead of you. So that which is going to have you in back on fam, understand that he is the one that's going to go ahead of you. The Lord is going to go ahead of you. That's what you need to grasp, appropriate by faith right the lord is the one who goes ahead of you he will be with you and will not fail you or forsake you do not fear or be dismayed the lord is the one who goes ahead of you he will be with you he will not fail you or forsake you do not fear or be dismayed he also took me to deuteronomy 130 the lord your god who goes before you will himself fight on your behalf yes it's going to be challenging where you're going to go there will be demons patiently waiting for your arrival to usher you into the season of havoc that they have planned for you but the god of glory says that he is the one that's going to fight on your behalf so not only is he going to go ahead of you and instructs us not to fear or be dismayed he will be with you he's going to go ahead of you he's going to be with you he won't fail you and then he's going to fight for you he's gonna fight on your behalf psalm 139 5 says you go before me and follow me so not only is the lord going ahead of you <laughs> and being with you he is also gonna follow you you place your hand of blessing on my head and his hand of blessing is gonna be upon your head and he took me to isaiah 52 12 and said for the lord will go before you he keeps saying this for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Just before then, on Psalm 139, said, 39, 5 said, You go before me and follow me. He's going to be your rear guard. That means he's going to come from behind you, so that he watches out about that which is trying to tackle you from behind family. <laughs> Isaiah 45, 2 says, I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. We serve a God who is almighty we serve a god who is all powerful right one who does not fail so let's just remind ourselves about that family this is what's up this is how the the god of glory is moving he says he will level the mountains and break down gates of bronze and cut down um cut through bars of iron 
Psalm 136, 16 says, To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Appropriate that by faith, fam. And I want to round up by closing off with Isaiah 41, 10 says, My tongue, though, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I want to round it off by saying Isaiah 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I want to say this again. Let it sink in, fam. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is the word of the Lord. So do not be afraid, family. You know, whatever it is that Satan thinks is God worked out and is about to, you know, carry out or whatever, we're not interested. You are to go out and go out. Hey, fam, you are to go. That's my cousin. Fam, I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. Ooh, she must be so upset with me right now because I promised to do something for her. Love you, love you, love you, cuz. I'm on it. I'm on it. Um, You can blame it on your nieces, okay? <laughs> blame it on your nieces. <laughs> um, But yeah, he's the God of glory that says that he's going to go ahead of you and he's going to prepare the place for you so there's nothing for you to be afraid of fam what he has for you it's gonna be intimidating because it's that big it has to be big like that because it's god who's behind it if people don't turn around and say that was god that did that then he won't he won't be in it it's gonna be something that is going to have your head spin i don't know what it is god doesn't really give details but he kind of like gives us a framework but he doesn't give all the details i don't even want to lie fam but this, this is happening now for his children and it's going to be intimidating, but it's going to require you to move from a place of faith. So do not be afraid. Thank you. Thank you, Kaz. Thank you so much for, for being patient with me. I love you. I appreciate you. I appreciate that a lot. So do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. He will strengthen you and help you. And remember, fam, we have the Holy Spirit. And who is he to us, right? He's our helper. He's our advocate. He's our counselor. He's our comforter. So you speak to him first before you speak to anybody else. You sought his help first before you sought anybody's help. Because he's the one that will direct you in the way they should go. He's the one with the mandate. He's the one with the plans. He's the one with the strategies. He's the one with the overall, you know, modus operandi in terms of where the Lord is leading you. And I want to encourage you again, Ezekiel 48, 35, know that where you are going, I don't know what that looks like for you, where the Lord is taking you, understand that the Lord is there. He is already there. Okay, he is already there. And this just confirms that portion of the scripture that he gave me yesterday. And he's expanding on it to say that I will go ahead of you. So everything that I've read right now, meditate on it. You know, because the God of glory is saying that where he's leading you, he has gone ahead of you and you're going to find him there. You are going to find the Lord there. So you need not be afraid. And he speaks about that because whatever it is, is going to be probably quite big. And when he stretches your faith, it can be quite you know, taunting, you know, let's just be honest. We fear sometimes when you look at the magnitude or what is required in terms of moving from a place of faith by the Lord, it can be uh, daunting and instill a level, of fear, a level of fear, right? But the God of glory says, do not fear because he's going to cripple you. Fear is crippling. So do not fear. Find strength in the Lord. Sought his help. Understand who he is in your life and in this season. He's the God of glory that says you need to occupy the land. It's time to occupy the land, fam. So go out and occupy the land and do not be swayed. Do not be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Understand that he's your rear guard. He's got ahead of you. He's operating from inside of you. And he says that he's going to be with you. He's everywhere. <laughs> he's going to be there <laughs> waiting for you when you arrive. Because he's already gone before you and he's going to operate from inside of you. He's going to be your rear guard and he's going to strengthen you in the meantime and give you the help that you need. Speak to your father. Speak to the Lord. He is opening the right paths for his children right now. Right. And he's going to lead us in the right way. So you must never think for a moment that. Oh no, but I've lost so much time and I don't think the Lord is able to do what I've been trusting him for because it's been so long, this and that and something else. No. 
No, 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 no. To God, a day is like a thousand year, a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. To God, His timing is not our timing. There are things that I've been trusting the Lord for for years, my people. Like I be like, oh Lord, like seriously, like I don't know, you know what I mean? Like it tested everything in me and my faith. But the beauty about the God of Glory is that. He knows all things. And the fact that he knows all things, we don't know everything. We don't know sometimes why the Lord takes a while or allows for something to happen later than when we are expecting it. It's because his timing is perfect. He says in Isaiah 60, 20, 22, that when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. And I want to go to the scripture because the Lord also drops something about that to say that right now the, 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 there's a change of God, there's a switch to how things have been looking for the longest time. Perhaps you've been that person that's been overlooked. Oh, Lord Jesus, preach Holy Spirit. You are that person that's been overlooked, despised, rejected, hated, spoken ill of, character assassinated, uh, your reputation assassinated, all of those things. But the God of glory is about to uh, exalt some and humble some. And that he's going to do in this season as well. So I want to go to Isaiah uh, 60, 22, because I want to read a, a top portion of that passage of scripture, because the Lord also highlighted in my spirit. And it begins by saying, a little, a little one shall become a thousand, a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. I want to go to the NIV portion or NIV version rather <laughs> the list of you the least of you maybe you have been part of that list right the least of you will become a thousand the smallest a mighty nation I am the Lord in his time I will do it swiftly whatever that territory looks like whatever that which you're going to take possession of is going to move you from being the least among the many to being you know a mighty nation of the Lord I don't know. You're going to have to sort for interpretation on that famine as the Lord. What on earth is he talking about? Because he's speaking to all his children in the season. So be encouraged to know that the Lord has not forgotten about you, you know, because men, God doesn't see as men does. He, he looks at the heart and he doesn't care about the outward appearance. And he has been watching the hearts of his children for a long time. The Lord has been sitting and observing our ways. The book of Job says about our ways to the Lord. Man, let me tell you what it says. The book of Job, the God of glory says, Job 34, 21, his eyes are on the ways of a man and he sees all his steps. Let me say it again. Let me say and. Uh, new living translation for god watches how people live he sees everything they do english standard version says for his eyes are on the ways of a man and he sees all his steps god has just because he's been chilling and quiet and not like you know talking a lot and saying a lot doesn't mean that he hasn't been seeing what's been going on god has been watching god has been observing god has been seeing he's been seeing everything everything and now that he's in the business of reversing a lot of things he's taking his counting stock god is counting stock he's pulling the receipts going through the files and it's not because he's forgotten he needs to be reminded no he's doing it because god needs to hold certain people accountable mm -hmm. and he needs to level the planes and level the the mountains you know and he's preparing a place for his children those who've been faithful and have been faithfully so, uh, dili faithfully and diligently sorting him and have been faithfully and patiently waiting for the god of glory to move on their behalf so i hope that you're encouraged family i'm gonna just jump out i had to jump on here because i was like lord i'm catching flames let me talk and let me be out but to God be the glory nonetheless. So thank you so much, fam. Appreciate your love. Appreciate your support. Please continue to pray for us here at God's Hara Mission. Pray for Africa USA Radio as well. We are doing the same thing about the gospel of Christ Jesus. That's that's where we are at. You know, um, the devil is mad. He's angry. He is livid. And uh, he's, he's just lost his mind so um your prayers are really appreciated because these are vehicles that are being placed by the lord you know in our hands for us to propel the gospel so he tries to make sure that it becomes very difficult to do you know so um 
but nonetheless, Christ in us has overcome the world. But again, uh, your prayers are really helping a lot for 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 um for us to be able to bear, you know, the weight and to to keep going from strength to strength and glory to glory by God's special grace. So thank you so much. Um, I trust that this message message is gonna bless you. Um, and I know that you know you're gonna be encouraged and really lifted up in the spirit because He's a God who keeps us you know, uh, being mindful of who he is and what he speaks of and who um, or what he's about to do in our lives. So be encouraged by the message, fam. He's got ahead of you. He's inside of you. He's your rear guard. And he says that you want to find him exactly where he said you ought to go. So stay prayed up. Keep worrying in the spirit. Do it from a place of rest. No, though, don't be like, you know, all caught up. Just everything you do, know that you're victorious in Christ Jesus and you are more than a conqueror in him and understand that. When he's spoken it, he's going to see to it that he fulfills it. His word never returns to him void. God doesn't lie. He doesn't know what that is because he's the spirit of truth. Satan is the ninja who lies. Okay, he's the one that's always talking nonsense and trying to drive us mad. You gotta cancel that voice and get rid of it, you know, because you can't have both, right? Either you're gonna listen to the Lord or you're gonna listen to the devil. So it's also time for us to pick a lane. So align your thoughts and align, you know, your mind and your soul and your spirit and your body with the word of God so that you're in perfect alignment with what he's saying and what he's doing at any given point. And then cancel out everything that Satan is trying to plant in your mind because he's the author of confusion. He might try and draw you and get your attention on different directions. It's time for him to be silenced permanently by the spirit of God. So every time he tries to jump at you, coming out with a stupid thought, your job is to pick up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and you speak over that lie and you command authority over it. You make that lie obedient to the to the um to to Christ, which is which is word made flesh. So take that thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Nothing that is not in alignment of God should be superseding or trying try to take precedence over that which God has already spoken. So you speak that word. You keep speaking it. You speak it because it's active, it's alive, it's going to do that for which it's being assigned. You speak over it even if you don't see it changing. You keep on speaking because you are doing something in the spiritual realm. Understand that our battle is not with uh, 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 men, you know, it's not, we, we're not fighting flesh and blood here. Um, it's not of a carnal nature. We are battling spirits. We are battling spirits. We are battling kingdoms, rulers, principalities, and powers of this dark age. That's where the war is. So when you see something taking place physically that doesn't go right, you gotta take it in the spirit and you gotta go in there, guns blazing with the full armor of God, Ephesians 6 10, and you speak that word. You command for that situation to be obedient to what the word of God says because there's nothing that's going to be above the word of God. When he said something, it is, it will always be. Nothing is going to change that because he doesn't change. If anything that the God of glory had said that begins to change, it will prove him to be a liar and God is not a liar. And God, God, God is faithful. You know, he's steadfast. So we need to be relentless also in our steadfastness when it comes to speaking his word with relentless. We got to be refreshed right and walk with god by the way so he can strengthen you and sustain you and uphold you and keep you steady you can't do this by yourself you're gonna need his holy spirit to keep you at it so i want to just charge you and i want to encourage you to go ahead to speak speak over that situation i promise you fam there's so much attack <laughs> that's been on my life for the longest time there are moments when i'm like lord i'm about to lose my mind god this is not going right what's going on i'll get frustrated i'll be like just wanting to pull my hair out in the midst of that the holy spirit will be like you speak it as you are crying you speak it as you are screaming you speak my word as you are rolling on the floor upset you speak my word as you are crying your heart out you speak my word as you are frustrated in the most in your darkest hour you speak that word consistently i promise you he's doing so much damage in the enemy's camp like you won't even believe because the lord just doesn't raise you up to take command of a certain position he does that because he knows that he will give you the capacity to do it and it's not going to be an easy journey because there's a lot of things you're going to be fighting simultaneously but the but the God of glory will give you the grace to do it. He will direct you. He will teach you how to battle in the spirit. You need only speak the word. Remain in prayer. 
praise the Lord, worship him in spirit and in truth, and you become hellbent. I'll use that word right now. Hellbent <laughs> on seeing that which the God of glory has spoken over your life and that of your family come to fruition. Until then, you keep at it. And if you need support, you need help, you call on a sister or a brother in Christ that you know is a warrior in the spirit and you go at it and you sit on it. You keep praying and you continuously speak speak to the Lord about it until such time there's a release in the spirit and Satan is forced to do what he gotta do which is to bow down to the God of glory to the Lord of laws and the King of Kings and that which is purposed upon your life until then we keep doing this thing called war we keep warring in the spirit fam so I just want to encourage you remain on his word reach out to your support group your community your church and have them rally around you to keep you standing you remember the the story with moses and the two guys i think it was aaron and some other guy that was standing on either side of him as they would battle the enemies you know the ammonites and the amorites and the the the, the tights you know <laughs> those guys you remember that each time that his he would have his, his stuff raised up right like all the way up and then each time he would get tired right he called on the two guys and they stood on either side to make sure that his hands remained up all the time because every time they would lower the hands because he was tired of holding it up and that was the instruction of the lord he sought support you get the guys that can keep your hands up holding that stuff up until you see victory on that area of your life up until you see deliverance in that area of life up until you see transformation by its roots from its roots come to fruition until then you keep that rod that stuff raised and you have the support group to hold up your hands and keep it in position while the lord was for you you're doing this thing with the god of glory you are doing this thing with the god of glory nothing's going to happen this season the joshua's of today i hope you hear me nothing's going to happen is this season outside of you being actively involved and making sure that you do your part as the spirit of god leads as the spirit of God leads. So be led of the spirit and do not lose heart. And if you feel dismayed, discouraged and tired and exhausted, you strengthen yourself in the Lord and you go by doing so. Uh, you, go do, you go about doing that by reaching for his word because that's where he will minister to you. Make it, make it, make it a habit to spend time with the Lord each and every day, each and every day. Because let me tell you something, the guys on the other side, on the dark forces, they have a pattern, they have a system in place. Every time at a certain time of the day or night, they know that they need to do something to realize what they are aspiring to see happening in my life and yours. You need to be on the other hand, waiting with the armor of God to have everything <laughs> bounce back and not in time set, set root in your territory you gotta guard your territory and you gotta do so by the word of god and make sure that you is consuming fire is forever lit <laughs> it's lit and the blood of jesus is speaking for you so you speak because god has given us a voice he's given us his word and he's given us the power who is the holy spirit the all supreme power and he's told us how we need to move so as you take possession of the land be ready and armored to make sure that you 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 are empowered to be able to really grab it because some of these lands you're gonna have to grab by force okay and that's gonna be happening in the spirit you're not gonna go and you know hit somebody's head with a blank no i mean you gotta handle up in the spirit and call that which the god of glory had spoken over your life in the enemies are sitting with it the enemies were occupying the promised land isn't that right the hetites canaanites amorites they were chilling living large in my land and yours which was promised to be your inheritance. Whatever that land looks like, they're silly, they're sitting there, occupying promises that are not theirs. You are going to take it by force, and you're going to occupy it, and it's going to be sustained by the Spirit of God who's going to be operating in you and through you, for you and by Him. So that's how we are moving. Take territory, and you take it violently in the Spirit. That's where violence should be, my fam, in the Spirit. <laughs> In the spirit, Apostle Paul says, right? What does he say, Apostle Paul? He says that heavenly places are volatile. There's a lot of violence up there. It's not pretty. No way in the Bible does it say that the devil walks across trying to have tea and cookies in the, in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. When the Holy Spirit meets with Satan, it's a full-on war, standard procedure. So this is nothing new, fam. So understand that it's part and parcel of our daily lives. So make it a habit to get into the habit of going to war in the Spirit because that's what it is. You know, that's just this, this, the principle, the kingdom principle, right? We are told this. So 
nobody told us that it's gonna be easy otherwise if it wasn't war then we wouldn't need the armor because what does the armor do it protects you know when somebody goes into war the, the soldiers even they are armed right you they would wear what they need to because there's a uniform you gotta put in for that which you are called to do and you gotta be armed right that's why we have all this um pieces that make up the armor of god because it's a full-on war sorry fam it's a full-on war that you are about to go into oh nothing better break here because my boss will be like girlfriend um <laughs> so it's your duty and mine to armor up armor up right but we won't be doing this by ourselves we'll be doing it by the strength of the lord family the strength of the lord thy god he's the one that's going to give us the victory and we are already victorious anyway conquerors in christ jesus so we're not fresh in this thing but we're going to go out there and claim and take possession of the land because God has said that will, he will be waiting for us right there where the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites, the Titus ninjas, the Tites are going to be chilling. We are going to be walking in there and just taking what's rightfully ours. Remember that when God has promised you something, it's yours already from the time you were born before you were even born. So it's not like you need to be asking questions or sending applications. Just claim your stuff. You know when you grab your bag, ladies, let me talk about you. When you grab your handbag, you've got a confidence about grabbing that handbag. Né? You grab it knowing that this is mine. You don't ask questions, right? <laughs> to be like, I don't know, I wonder whose bag is this. Your stuff, you treat it like it's your stuff. So you go in there knowing that this is the inheritance of those who are in Christ Jesus and you grab what's yours. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not stealing anything. God said he's going to honor the promises that he had, he had made with your forefathers, right? So he's going to give you the portion which you are co, you are, you are, is rightfully yours, your birthright in Christ Jesus, you are co heir to Christ. So that which the Lord has spoken over you, it's yours for the taking, but you're going to grab it and, 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 and pull it your direction, right? And allow for the Spirit of God to lead you. I hope this is ministered to you, fam. I'll love and leave you, and I'll leave it there because, yeah, I've got a dash off to <laughs> handle love on other things. You know, the Lord is so busy nowadays, it's like, got no chills. But um, to God be the glory nonetheless. May the God of glory richly bless you. I just want to pray quickly. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord, that you've begun to do a new thing. Lord God, to each and every brother and sister who will be tuned in, even now or later on, Heavenly Father, ask that you minister to their hearts. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you give them the boldness and the strength and that you give them the tenacity, Heavenly Father, then the courage that they need, Lord God, to enter into this new season, to take possession of the land as you've commanded Joshua, to not be afraid, not to be discouraged, but to be strong in the Lord. So I thank you, Lord God, for your spirit of boldness, the spirit of power, of a sound mind and of self-control. For you have not given us a spirit of timidity. Help us, Lord God, so that we are able to move from a place of boldness, demonstrating the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. For your kingdom is not of talk, but it is of power. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that your power may be realized and come upon your children. I pray for your glory to be made manifest, Heavenly Father. And as we take possession of the land as we begin to occupy the land as you've purposed in each and every person's life i just want to thank you that you are already there i thank you that you've gone ahead of us i thank you that you're operating from in us by your spirit i thank you that you are a real god i thank you that you are a helper by your spirit i thank you that you are a god who fights the battles that we are faced with on our behalf i thank you heavenly father for we received victory in christ jesus he is the author of our faith he is the finisher of our faith and in him we can do all things for you are a god who doesn't fail and I thank you, Heavenly Father, that in him all things hold together. So the will that we are living out, Heavenly Father, is new creation in Christ Jesus, having been resurrected because he died so that we may live. I thank you, Lord God, that we are able to stand firmly on the word of God, which is unchanging. For you are your word, you don't change. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you've helped us to remain steadfast and not to look to the left, to the right, but to keep our eyes fiercely fixed on Christ Jesus, who is the author and finish of our faith. And I thank you, Lord God, as I pray a blessing over each and every person that's going to be under the sound of my voice and their household as well, Lord God, that you begin to stretch forth your hand of favor, your protection, Heavenly Father, and camp your angels around their homes lord god the vehicles that they drive um just pour unto them heavenly father your consuming fire which is yourself lord and i thank you lord god as i plead the blood of jesus over them that that which you have promised them lord god they will see it they will taste and see that the lord is good for you are a god who doesn't lie and you are a god of a covenant and you don't break covenants lord and i just want to thank you lord that we can come boldly into the throne of grace where we are sure to obtain mercy which is renewed every single morning which is made afresh every single morning and i thank you for your heart of compassion i thank you that you are a god who is good and i thank you that we got to enjoy the goodness of god 
God in your loving kindness, which is everlasting. So unto you, Lord God, be the glory, be the honor. We worship you, we magnify you, and we glorify your name. And I pray all of this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus as we occupy until the second coming of our Lord and Savior, um, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one who is, who was, and is to come, the way, the truth, and the life the resurrection himself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Be blessed, fam. Girl, gotta go. It's been a day and a half. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Until I come back again, family, love you. Stay blessed.